Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And in quilting, it's very important that we stay organized. That organization, well, helps us stay organized, which means we can pick up and start sewing wherever we left off whenever we have time. That organization also helps us make less mistakes. And there's a block builder base that's going to help us stay organized and help us make less mistakes. These block builder bases are like miniature design walls. We're going to be able to use these to organize during the cutting as we're stitching and as we are putting the blocks together. We can get two different sizes, a nine by nine and a 12 by 12. And they come two in a pack. The block builder base is a lightweight yet sturdy base that we're going to be able to use to transport our fabric and help organize our fabric. We have this little soft piece of fabric that fits on top. So we're able to take the pattern layout of the block that we're going to use and put it in between the layers. We can see the pattern and we're going to be able to use these to help keep us organized. And you can put any designs underneath them. You can draw your own designs or print out your own designs. If I'm doing a project and it has two different blocks, I'm going to use two different block builder bases. And that way all of my fabric and my blocks are going to stay together. They're lightweight, they don't take up a lot of room, so they're easy to keep yourself organized. I'm going to be making an hourglass block and I'm going to make four blocks. But I'm going to use this block builder to help me stay organized. So the first thing I need to do is have a layout of my block. You can hand draw the block or have it printed out. Print it out from your pattern and blow it up. Any way that you can get your block is fine. With this block, I want to take this drawing of the block and I want to mark it with some marks to help me stay organized. And as you can see here in the example of this one, there are arrows. Those arrows are pressing directions. So we have not only the pressing directions for the individual pieces, but on how to put those blocks together. If you have the book, Easy Precision Piecing, there's a lot of great hints and tips on how to use these blocks. But today I'm going to make the one block, go through it step by step so that we can see how to use these. So I'm going to start with that drawing or a printout of the block. I personally like to color code this. I'll be making this in a red and a white. So I'm going to take red and color in the blocks that I want red. The rest of the blocks are going to be white. So I'm just going to put a W on them because my paper is already white. I also like to add some measurements. For example, this block is a finished 8 inch block. So I'll write that on the bottom. And I will write some of the sizes just so at a glance I will know what the size of the fabric cut will be. So my block is going to be an 8 inch block. I need to make four of them. These squares are going to be two and a half inch cut, which will be a two inch finished. These half square triangles are four and a half inches, which will be four inches when the blocks are finished. From here, I'm going to add some pressing directions. Now, if you have a pattern that already tells you the directions, as you're reading the pattern, take time and color these in, mark them in, and draw the arrows in the direction that the pattern is recommending. If you don't have pressing directions, we're going to be able to figure it out on this shape. So I would recommend having at least two of the same block. So as a general rule, we do like to press the dark to itself. So we do not have a shadow underneath the white. So the first thing I'm going to do is with pencil, mark that direction going into my darks. I also know that these corners I'm going to want to fan out. So those will get an X. When all of this is put together, the center piece I will also want to fan out. So I'm going to put an X. Once one is done, I'm going to take a second page and lay it out as if those pieces are going to be sewn together. From there I can compare if my seam allowances are going to go in the right direction. 
And in this case, I will have both those seams going up and I'd like one up and one down. So I can now change one to go in the other direction. So I know those are going to match together. And I'm going to be able to rearrange this paper until all of those four blocks are together, continuously checking those arrows as to see the pressing directions. Once I know that they're all right, I'm going to be able to take this and put it on my block builder base. So if I would need two different blocks, I will have two different boards. But in this case, I will only be needing one board. We can also add notes on cutting. For example, these half square triangles, I'm going to start with a five inch square, draw that diagonal line, and then trim it down to the four and a half. So for a total of my four blocks, I'm going to need to cut four red and four white. For these four patches, I'm going to cut widths of fabric at two and a half inches, recut to four and a half. The more notes you put on this, the better it is. So I'm going to be able to take my white fabric and put it down and my red fabric and put it down. I know those are going to go together. I have those strips of fabric and this is what I can start with. So I know that the fabric that I need is all right here. Then we can start sewing these units together. So I'm going to sew those strips together and make those half square triangles. I have my half square triangles ready to go. I have my lines drawn and they're all stacked together, ready to go to the machine. And same with my strips. So I can just pick this up and bring it right to the machine. And I know that this fabric belongs to this block. With each stage of cutting or pressing, I'm going to put them back on the board. This corner is going to be pressed in one direction. When this is cut and pressed, it's going to go in the other. So I'm just going to be able to keep cutting and placing on top of this board. Now that my first cutting is done, I'm going to be able to bring this over and press it. This fabric on the top really holds the fabric so it doesn't slide as you're walking and it keeps it in place. And if I needed to, I could stack all of these up. So I'd be able to take one board off at a time, finish that and carry on. I now have all the pieces in the right order. The seams were pressed according to the diagram and they're in the positions they need to be. I can now pick this up, bring it to the machine and continue sewing. They're back in order and I have my four patches done. This X means I'm going to fan out that center seam, which means I have seams going in one direction. So I'm going to continue that fan shape. With a little twist, you can loosen up those threads so the seams are going to press in a circular motion. When that's pressed, you can see that little open seam, sort of a swirl. I'm always keeping my pieces in the same order. Now I'm going to be able to continue to sew this block together. The blocks are now sewn together and I haven't made any mistakes. If I needed to stop halfway through the project, I'll be able to pick up this board at any time and continue it. I now will be able to sew the four of these together and make my little table topper. My block is put together. There has been no mistakes made. All of my seams are going in the right direction. So all of those intersections did nestle together, which gives us nice sharp points and beautiful little intersections. And we really do like to see those blocks line up and we enjoy our time at the machine. So if we're able to get a pile of these to bring back and forth to the machine and the pressing area as we need, it definitely is going to keep us organized, which means less mistakes. If this is something you're wanting to try, there is a free pattern when you buy one of these sets. So you can just go online and download that free pattern. It gives you the blocks that you need. They're color coded and all of those pressing arrows are there already on that sheet for you. So you just put this underneath and follow. We have all the cutting directions. It makes a really nice table runner, but it does give you a step by step with that free pattern on how to really take advantage of these block builder bases.
having that diagram underneath that soft piece of fabric really makes it easy for us to see where we're going, where we've been, and where we're headed to. And it does keep the fabric little pieces on. We can get them in the 12 inch or the nine inch. And by keeping us organized, it definitely makes it more enjoyable for us to be in our sewing room. I'll put a link in the description. And as always, thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're talking about next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.